Welcome to Commerce class. In today's class, we are going to learn about the forms of business organization. There, we can be divided into two different category. One under non-corporate enterprise, another against corporate enterprise. Under non-corporate enterprise, we have sole trading concern, partnership firm and joint Hindu family business. So, they come under non-corporate enterprise. Under corporate enterprise, we have government, private and cooperatives, which is once again subdivided into public undertaking and public utilities. Under private, you have joint stock company. So the forms of organization is divided into two different categories. One is non-corporate enterprise, another one is corporate enterprise. So under non-corporate, we have sole trading, partnership firm and joint Hindu family business. Under corporate, you have government, private and cooperative, which is once again subdivided into public undertaking, public utilities and private, it is joint stock company. Now we go on to see in detail about sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship is a form of organization which we see very close to our house. You can see a single person running the business. So he is called a sole proprietor or a sole trader or a, a person who carries out a business on his own without anyone's support. So sole proprietorship is a form of business organization in which an individual introduces his own capital. That is he uses his own capital for investment and he uses his skill and intelligence in the management of its affairs so to manage the business he ha he does not depend anyone he uses his skill and his talent for uh, managing the affairs and is solely responsible for the result of its operation so whether whatever is the output whether it is a positive or a negative he stands responsible for all his activities so this is the meaning of sole proprietorship now let us see the definition of sole trader. A sole trader is a type of business unit where a person is solely responsible for providing the capital, for bearing the risk of the enterprise and for the management of business. This definition is given by J.L. Hansen. Okay? So this is the definition of sole trader where they say it is a unit where one person he is responsible for is responsible for what? To provide capital. And because he is responsible, he bears the risk of the enterprise for the management of the business. So this is what is called a sole trader. Next, let us see the characteristics. Here, ownership by one man. He is, a, he is a person who owns everything. So, the sole trader contributes required capital. He is not the owner of the business but also manager of the entire affairs. So, all the affairs he has to manage the show on his own. Next, he has a complete freedom of work and quick decision. He need not consult anybody to take a decision. So he can very quickly go on to take a decision because he is an individual person. So he has got freedom of work to do the work at any time at his own discretion. Next, unlimited liability. This is also one of the characteristics. When his business asset is not sufficient to pay off the business debts, he has to pay from his personal property. That is to say, if the business asset is not sufficient to repay back all his loan or all his debts in the outside of the business, then he has to face the debt by, by uh, meeting out the liability from his personal property. Next, enjoyment of entire profit. He strives tirelessly to provide, to improve and expand the business. So, all the benefits of hard work is not shared by anyone. So, the much he works hard, he enjoys the entire profit. Absence of government regulation. There is no government uh, rules and regulations which he has to follow. So the legal formalities to be observed in the formation of the business or management or in its closure is comparatively less or you can say is free from government regulations when compared to other forms of organization. Next, he can maintain secrecy of affairs of the business. So this is very easy to maintain the secret because, because he is a single person here. So maintenance of secrecy is also another characteristic. 
so let us see the example of sole trader handicraft it can be any form of handicraft it can be a bag work or it can be a jewelry work or it can be any other sort of handiwork then tailoring shops a tailor is also considered to be a sole trader then retail trade a small outlet uh, where they sell different variety of goods then filigree work petit shop beauty parlor fruit seller or defy all this is the example of sole trade now let us see the advantages of sole trading business very easy to form now what we saw previously were the characteristics of sole trader okay so he is a uh, ownership is by one man he has got freedom of work to and to, can take quick decision unlimited liability enjoyment of entire profit absence of government regulation maintenance of secrecy and all these are the characteristics or features of a sole trader now we go on we see the examples now we are going to see the handicraft handicraft tailoring shop retail trade filigree work petit shop beauty parlor fruit seller or it can be a sweet shop or it can be a, a medical shop all these are examples of sole trading form of business organization now let's see the advantage it's very easy to form the sole trader because any person he can who is ready to start a business can start from his own resources so it is very easy when compared to other forms then there is a incentive to hard work the more effort he puts in the more work he does hard he is rewarded in the form of profit and he need not share it with anybody so there is an incentive to work hard then the capital is small here you need not have large amount of capital enormous capital if it is very small capital then it, that is the advantage of sole proprietorship he can start with a small capital then credit standing here the financial uh, organizations are ready to uh, give him the credit based on his private property and uh, he can get more financial assistance from others also personal contact with the customers since he deals with only a small uh, small percentage of customers he knows very well the taste and preference of the customers and according to the preference of the customers uh, requirements he supply the goods so personal contact with the customers this helps him to boost his profit then flexibility it is a highly type flexible type of organization he can adjust and change the requirement of the business according to his schedule so you say it is highly flexible so these are the advantages of a sole trader one very easy to form because formalities are less and though more he works hard he is rewarded in the form of profit and need not share it with anyone the capital requirement is very small when compared to other form other forms of organization and the private property is held liable for his business debt so other everyone is ready to give him a loan then he has a personal touch with his customers and based on their requirements he 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 needs he meets out their needs so he is able to earn more then he is highly flexible type of organization so if the sole trader can easily adjust and change the requirements of his business next where if there is advantage we have disadvantage also now the disadvantage of sole trading business limited capital here capital has to be contributed only by one single individual so he cannot expect to start a big business because his source is very very limited then limited managerial skill only a single person intelligence and experience may not help him beyond a certain stage so he has to focus on each and every activity his managerial ability is limited so this is also one of the drawback then unlimited liability if he is not able to repay back his debts then he has to meet out the debts from his personal property so the creditors have the right to recover the dues from the personal property is also one of the disadvantage so unlimited liability limited managerial skill limited capital is all are all these the disadvantages of sole trader form of organization 
then he cannot specialize himself in any one particular field because he has to uh, he has to do a different type of work he has to be an accountant he has to be he has to be a purchaser he has to be a sales person then he has to manage different affairs of his business so the business unit is small and the financial resources are limited expert in different field cannot be employed to secure maximum advantage so we, there is lack of specialization sometimes he is bound to take hasty decisions because he need not consult anybody so thinking that whatever decision he takes is correct he is bound to take a wrong decision so this is also one of the drawback so hasty decisions we cannot uh, appoint a specialist in different field this is also a drawback uh, unlimited liability limited managerial skill and limited capital so these are the drawbacks or disadvantages of sole trader but even in spite of it we say sole proprietorship is best why what is the reason because it is enough if you have a low capital investment and you can involve in activities which have low risk and you can take decisions very quickly so these are the reasons why we say that sole proprietorship is best for example maintaining a grocery store a medical store a craft center a legal consultancy so all these um, all these tactics we apply in this in these different fields of business so that is the reason we say sole proprietorship is best okay so we saw why sole proprietorship is best what are the drawbacks of sole proprietorship then we saw what is the advantage and we saw the different examples of sole trading form of business and what are the characteristics of sole trader and then we saw the definition the meaning okay and we saw the forms of business organization thank you children